You know, many TV shows uh, live on in syndication, live on in excellence, uh, critical appeal. But this show continues to be uh, what they call a motivator to the modern procedural drama or the crime drama. If you can live up to the show, you could probably live up to anything. Now, in my personal opinion, if you do the rough numbers, if this show was worth $10 million a year in the last 50 years has been shown, uh, in syndication and otherwise, will this turn into the first billion dollar TV show? If you look at it, because you count the advertising revenue, syndication rights, everything else, it was probably the first billion dollar, uh, what do you call it, commercial TV show. Now, today we're talking about probably a top 20 TV show of all time, Hawaii Five O. Now, uh, it first debuted in 1968, and like I said, it's a police procedural drama. Produced by CBS, but I had a feel of a kind of a NBC uh, Universal uh, appeal, uh, Universal, the, uh, the movie studio. And it was created by the great Leonard Freeman. Now, uh, set in Hawaii, it uh, used uh, various vistas and uh, culture and uh, multiple, uh, what do you call, uh, backgrounds to uh, make the show uh, uh, wide-reaching. It ran for 12 seasons from 1968 to 1980, and again, continues in reruns in Canada on the great CHCH. Now, at the airing of its last episode, it was the longest-running police drama in American television history and the last fictional primetime show that uh, debuted in the 1960s to leave the air. Now, the show starred, of course, the, uh, the hair god, Jack Lord, as Detective Cab Ca Captain Stephen C. McGarrett, the head of a special state police task force in Hawaii, which was based on an actual unit that existed under martial law after World War II. The team music, composed by Morton Stevens, became especially popular. I think it hit the charts. Everyone can, if you haven't heard the theme, once you hear it, you can't get it out, you can't get it ahead. Now, many episodes would end with McGarrett's catchphrase, Book him, Dano, where his assistant would basically say, take him in for a rest, but the, the, the line was Book him, da Dano. Dano played, of course, by former Disney star James McArthur. Now, when uh, when CBS brought it on September 20, 1968, uh, there was so much uh, pre-hype that we knew it was going to be a hit. Now, again, shot a location in Honolulu and uh, throughout the island of Oahu and other Hawaiian islands. And uh, sometimes it went, uh, what he called, outside of Hawaii for filming in L.A., Singapore, and Hong Kong because, of course, the Oriental... Uh, uh, subtext with the mafia and the, the people in the show. Now, the show centers on a fictional state police force, again, led by McGarrett, who's a former U.S. Naval officer and there's U.S. Naval tropes within the show. Now, he's appointed by the governor, Paul Jamison, to uh, run 5 and in the show, McGarrett oversees state police officers, including his key ones, the young Danny, Dana Williams, veteran Shinho Kelly, and streetwise Kono Kaluka for seasons one through four. Now, Honolulu Police Department officer Duke Lakelo joined the team as a regular, as did Ben Coco, who played Kono beginning with season five. Occasionally, McGarrett's 5 0 team is assisted by others as needed Douglas Mossman as det Detective Frank Kamana, P.O. Sandy Wells, Amanda McBroom, Medical Examiner Doc Bergman, Ala Berry, Forensic Specialist Jay Fong. Harry Endo, and a secretary. The first secretary was May, then Jenny, and later Malia, Lanny, and Luana. Now, the title of the show refers to Hawaii's status as the 50th state. Uh, as the uh, state had been admitted to Union only nine years before the show first aired. The 5-0 team consists of three to five members, uh, kind of a small for a real state police unit, and is portrayed as occupying a suite of office in Olani Palace. 5 lacks its own radio network, necessitating frequent requests by McGarrett to the Honolulu Police Department dispatchers. Now, for a dozen years, McGarrett's team hounded international secret agents, criminals, and organized crime syndicates plaguing the Hawaiian Islands. With the aid of DA and later Hawaii Attorney General John Mancotti, McGarrett is successful in sending most of his enemies to prison. Sort of like a combination of the fugitive 
Quincy, CSI, NYPD Blue, everything else. Now, the key uh, one uh, plot in the show, uh, a crime syndicate was led by crime family patriarch Honor Vacho, a character introduced in the fifth season. Other criminals and organized crime bosses on the islands were portrayed by key actors such as the great Ricardo Maltalban, Gavin McLeod, and Twilight Zone and Night Gallery alum Ross Martin as to Tony Alika. By the 12th and final season, series regular James McArthur had left the show, and in 1996 in published reports, he admitted that he'd become tired of the role and wanted to do other things, as has Cam Fong. Unlike other characters before him, Fong's char character, Shin Ho Kelly, at Fong's request, was killed off, murdered by working undercover to expose a production ring in Chinatown, the last episode of season 10. New characters, uh, Jim Kibo Karu, William Smith, Laurie Wilson, Sharon Farrell, and Truck Mo Kaley were introduced in season 12 alongside returning regular character Duke LaCaley. Now, most episodes of 5 0 ended with the arrest of criminals and McGarrett snapping Bookham. The offense occasionally was added after this phrase. For example, Bookham, murder one. In many episodes, this was directed to, Dan to Dano and thus became McGarrett's catchphrase, Bookham Dano. But if you look closely in the show, not every episode he says Bookham Dano. He said Bookham or whatever, but it became, you know, uh, a trope later on. Now, uh, McGarrett's tousled hair, uh, yet immaculate, you have to see to believe it, as well as for proclivity for wearing a dark suit and tie on all possible occasions, uncommon to the islands because of the humidity, entered popular culture. While the modern members of 5-0 dressed mainland much of the time, they also wore local styles, such as the Aloha shirt. Now, in many episodes, including the pilot, he's draw McGarrett is drawn to a world of international espionage and national intelligence, sort of, sort of like a poor man's prisoner. M McGarrett's nemesis is a rogue intelligent officer of the People's Republic of China named Wu Fat. The communist road agent was played by veteran King Diao in the show's final episode of 1980, titled Woe to Wolf At, McGarrett finally sees his foe go to jail. Now, unlike the reboot, the show's action and straightforward storytelling left little time for personal stories involving wives or girlfriends. There was a, an early plot with Diane Mulder, uh, you know, from Star Trek fame, uh, being an ex-girlfriend of McGarrett, but that wasn't really explored. Now, there was a, a two-part uh, story in the first season which uh, dealt with the loss of McGarrett's sister's baby. Now, occasionally a show would flashback to McGarrett's younger years or a romantic figure. Now, in the episode number one with a bullet part two, McGarrett uh, tells a criminal, it was a bastard like you who killed my father. His 42-year-old father had been run down and killed by someone who had just held up a supermarket. Because McGarrett is also a commander of the Naval Reserve, he sometimes used, uh, uses their resources to help investigate and solve crimes. Hence, the closing credits of some episode mentioned the Naval Reserve and some thank yous appear in the early uh, parts of certain episodes. Especially, uh, there was a heroin subplot with all people, David Burney. Now, it's a 1975 episode involving Dano's aunt, played by McCarter's mother, Helen Hayes, provide a bit, a bit of Dano's backstory. Now, Sources differ on how the show came to be. Now, Freeman moved to Hawaii to recuperate after suffering a heart attack. One source states that the idea for the show may have come from a conversation Freeman had with then Hawaii Governor John A. Burns. Now, another source uh, it said claims that Freeman wanted to set the show in San Pedro, L.A., until his friend Richard Boone, of all people, convinced him to shoot it entirely in Hawaii. A third source claims Freeman discussed the show with Governor Burns only after pitching the idea to CBS before settling on a name Hawaii Five-O. Freeman considered titling the show The Man like dealing with uh, the Jack Lord character. Now, the casting was quite interesting because not say they were typecast, but your key four actors, basically, uh, just like MASH, uh, they were so well-known and so went into a part that, you know, the, they were typecast. Now, Richard Boone was offered a part of the Garrick, but Boone turned it down. Now, Gregory Peck and Robert Brown were also considered. Ultimately, Jack Lord, who had rejected uh, Star Trek, 
then living in Beverly Hills, was asked at the last moment. Now, Lord Redford, apart on a Wednesday, was cast and flew to Hawaii two days later. As we know, Lord was heavy in the James Bond oeuvre. He was an early... Uh, a character and uh, Deshaun Connery movies of the 60s. Now, on the following Monday, Lord was on the, the front of the cameras. Freeman and Lord had also worked together before on an unsold TV pilot called Grand Hotel. Now, uh, Tim O'Kelly had originated the role of Dano in the pilot, but Tess Hodgson's appear apparently were not positive on O'Kelly. However, and MacArthur was replaced. MacArthur, very popular. <coughs> from his uh, Disney time, especially uh, Swiss Family Robinson. Now, Cam Fong Chun, an 18-year veteran of Honolulu Police Department, auditioned for the part of the lead Wolf Hat, but Freeman cast him in the part of Chin O'Kelly instead. Freeman took the name Wolf Hat from a restaurant in downtown Honolulu. The name Chin Ho came from Chin Ho, the owner of the uh, Likai Hotel, where the penthouse shot of Steve McGarrett in the opening title sequence is taken. Now, Richard Denning, who played the governor, had retired to Hawaii and came out of retirement for the show. Zulu was a Waikiki beach boy and local DJ when he was cast for the part of Kono, which he played for four years. Now, just to uh, recap, uh, the uh, the film, first season was shot in uh, in Pearl City, which the various cast members uh, uh, quickly called Mongoose Manor because it was shot in a Quonset hut. Now, the, the roof tended to leak and rats would offer gnaw on the cables. Now, the show was then moved to a Ford Ruger location for seasons two to eight. A, tur a turd stew was built on Diamond Head and was used during the last uh, four seasons. Now, a problem from the beginning was the lack of a movie industry in Hawaii. Now, much of the crew and cast, including many locals who ended up uh, taking part in the show, had to learn their respective jobs as they went along. Lord was known as a perfectionist who insisted on the best from, uh, from everyone. His uh, temper flared when he felt that others did not give them their best. But in later years, he admitted that Lord's hard-driving force had been the better actors and made 5 a better show. Lord's high standards helped the show last another six years after Freeman died from our trouble during the sixth season. Now, to critics and viewers, there was no question that Jack Lord was the show, and that the other actors frequently served as little more than props, standing and watching while McGarrett and Molden paced around the office, analyzing the crime. But occasionally episodes would focus on the other actors and let them showcase their own talents, such as Dano diffusing bombs in a clock struck 12. Since George Jack Lord had a financial interest in the show, he referred to other regular cast actors in the program as a with, as in with James or Carter. They were never called co-stars. Now, very few episodes were shot inside of Hawaii. There was two in L.A., one in Hong Kong, and one in Singapore. And of course, you know, with the crossover of certain character development. Now, the title sequence is probably one of the most popular of all time. It was created by the television director Reza S. Uh, Budgie. Early shows began with a cold open suggesting the sinister plot for the episode, which was quite normal at the time uh, for uh, episodic drama, but then cut to a shot of a big ocean wave and a start of the theme song. Now, a fa fast zoom in to the top balcony of the Alikai Hotel followed, showing McGarrett turning to face the camera, not a hair out of place, followed by many quick cuts and freeze frames of a wine scenery and a high uh, wine Chinese English model. Elizabeth Malama Malamala. Mayo Kalani, Logue turning the face to the camera. Now, a grass skirted hula dancer from the pilot episode was also included, played by Helen, Helen Kuaha Torka, who later became a professor of business technology at Windward Community College. The opening scene ended with shots of the supporting players and the, the, the infamous flashing blue light of a police motorcycle racing through a Honolulu street. Now, at the conclusion, the conclusion of each episode, Lord narrated a promo for the next episode, often emphasizing the guest villain. Now, this has been restored to DVD releases, but uh, not uh, uh, not in the uh, the episodic uh, syndication. Now, the 2010 reboot has been continued with uh, similar to this, but. Uh, the uh, it's not uh, not the same in relation to what he called the structured start and finish. Now there were two versions of the closing credits portion of the show. During the first season, the theme music was played over a short film of a flashing blue light 
attached to the rear of a police motorcycle. Now, uh, later on, the uh, second season on, the same music was played over a film of a rigor canoeist battling the surf. Quite quite dramatic, like, you know, everything is a battle against the surf in Hawaii and investigate him, a lot of allegory. Anyway, in a 2010 issue of TV Guide, the show's opening title sequence ranked number four in the list of top ten credit superiors sequences as selected by the readers. Now, again, it was the longest-running crime show in American telev tele television until Law & Order surpassed it in 2002, and it was the first to enjoy an uninterrupted run that exceeded a decade. Again, since then, Law & Order, S SVU, CSI, crime, crime Scene Investigation, NCS has run longer. Now, when the show premiered in, C in 68 Hawaii, it had been a state for only nine years, and it was relatively obscure to Americans who had never served in the Pacific Theater, but as a geographic part of Polynesia, it had an exotic image. Now, uh, the Hawaii-based television show that followed, Magni P.I., was created after Hawaii 5 and it is run in order to make further use of the expensive production facilities created there for 5 The first few Magnum episodes made direct references to 5 suggesting that it takes place in the same fictional setting. Not really a sequel, but not really a non-sequel. Magnum's producers made a few attempts to coax Jack Lord out of retirement for a cameo, but he refused. Since Hawaii 5 again, he wanted the retirement, and as we like to say, he's counting his money. Now, uh, many locals were cast in the show, and uh, again, the first run in syndication were seen, they say 400 million people around the world, I would, I would say close to a billion, because uh, uh, the, the thing is, uh, some episodes were what they call pirated over the years, even in satellite uh, dish era, so it's got to be close to a billion people. Now, uh, the... Uh, the, the idea was some problem with broadcast in 2021, there's a disclaimer on CHCH talking about some of the improper, uh, uh, what do you call, context and conduct of some of the characters, especially when there was a, a rape episode where the rape victim was challenged on the stand, which would never happen in 2021. Also, the 16th episode of the second season called Bored She Hung Herself, depicted a 5-0 investigation and apparent suicide of a woman by hanging which he was supposedly practicing as part of a health regimen. A viewer reportedly died trying the same technique, and uh, as a result, the episode was not rebroadcast, was never included in any syndication packages, as has not been included on any DVD release of the show to date. The family of the person who died in real life agging sued CBS over the episode. Now, another legacy of the show is the uh, popularity of the Hawaii Five O theme music. Da -da 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 -da. Da, 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 the tune was composed by Morton Stevens, who also composed numerous episode scores performed by the CBS Orchestra. The theme was later recorded by The Ventures, whose version reached number four on the Billboard Hot 100 pop chart, and is particularly popular with college and high school marching bands, especially at the University of Hawaii, where it's become the unofficial fight song. The tune has always been, always been, also been heard at Robertson Stadium after Houston Dynamo goals scored by Brian Ching, a native of Hawaii. Now, because of the tempo of the music, the theme gained popularity in the UK with Fathers of Northern Soul and was popular on dance floors in the 1970s. Now, for Hawaii 5 it had many broadcast uh, days on the show, uh, on the week. It showed up on Thursdays, Wednesdays, and Tuesdays, Fridays, and final season on Saturdays. Now, Hawaii 5 survived long enough to overlap with reruns of early episodes as part of the CBS late night uh, schedule, which we will maybe talk about later on uh, on this channel. Uh, once the program enters syndication after original run, CBS broadcast reruns of season 12 in late night under the title McGarrett to avoid confusion with the episode in syndication broadcast under the title Hawaii 5 Now, in the United Kingdom, the series first aired on ITV July 19, 1970, on Saturday nights. As of 2021, the series currently airs on CHCH TV 11, which is syndicated, syndicated across Canada on the Bell Dish, and CHCH airs the HD remastered version of the series in its original unedited broadcast versions, which I think is between 47 and 51 minutes. Now, 
very bizarre, ladies and gentlemen. It was never nominated for Best TV Show at the Emmys. He's won two Emmys. The uh, Outstanding standing Musical Composition in 1970 and Best Musical Composition in 1974. Although it's received nominations for Cinematography, Film Editing, Directing, uh, got a drama series nomination in 73, didn't win of course, and again Outstanding Actress uh, nomination for Helen, uh, Helen Hayes. Now CBS has the uh, home uh, media distribution of this and uh, there is a season 1 to 7 box set and a season 8 to 12 uh, box set. Now episode promos are intact on this if you're a completist as well. There's also been a soundtrack uh, release as well. Now for people that want to read uh, Y5 in print, there was a, it was a subject of six novelizations. Now each one had a plot line written for the book and was not based on a television episode. The first two books were published by Signet in 68 and 69. After that were two juvenile hardcovers published by Whitman in 69 71 and two more books were published in England. If you can find them let me know they're very rare to find and I think they have uh, various uh, promo shots of the front. Now another thing that's very weird here no Y50 comic book and no training cards. Why? Maybe because it was CBS properties. We know NBC and ABC did it quite, quite a bit. But Jack Lord, ladies and gentlemen, in this show, not, not, uh, not to degrade the great uh, Raymond Burr for Perry Mason or uh, Andy Griffin for Matlock, Jack Lord was a Y50. If any, any actor will have to be known for one thing, he wasn't typecast. He was, he was McGarrett. He was, Jack Lord was that show. And without Jack Lord, the show would never have been attempted. The, the man was a combination. He was like heartthrob and uh, what he called uh, a do-gooder and uh, a Christian character and a strong mental character. Any trope you wanted to put, put in, McGarrett was there. Like uh, rough on the criminals. Like, you know, he, he, and he'd be a lecturer too. You know, you get cops like that. So is he the ultimate uh, private investigator? Well, I'm not an expert because I'm not a private investigator. I'd like to interview a private investigator from Hawaii to ask them what they think about uh, Buck McGarrett. They'll probably say, well, it's good for business. And as we like to say, in an orchard order budget, if you, can, if you know what Bookham Dano is, you got to be over the age of 40 because you tell a kid now, 15, 20, they wouldn't even know what you're talking about. But I would suggest to any young person under age 18, if they're around 2 o'clock Atlantic time at home it, with COVID, to put on a Y50. It may seem strange at first, but you're going to get hooked because it is that interesting. There's a lot going on. It seems like stupid, but it's not. It's like, it's like reading a, a beautiful poem for the first time, you said, oh, that's triacle. You read it the 50th time, you cry, you read it 100 times, use it as a pickup line, whatever you're trying to pick up. So anyway, that's my view on a Y50. If you like what we're doing with our uh, remote control uh, podcast, let us know what you think. Give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And as we like to say throughout the Y50 uh, universe, got to watch the surf. You never know what's going to flow in. Have a good day. Bye.